Hey everyone, the fly I'm gonna be tying for you today is the mop fly. This is a fly that I'm sure you've seen hundreds of videos on how to tie it. Um, and it is the easiest fly you can tie, but I feel that my way is even easier. And one of the side benefits of it is it's extremely durable. And also, as you can see, it's really nice and clean looking. Um, and really, as far as a mop fly goes, I think it's uh, about as pretty as you can tie it. I'm a big believer in having really nice, clean flies. For me, when you have a really nice fly on the end of the tippet, it gives you confidence. And I just wanna have confidence in my flies because when I fish with confidence, it just translates into being super in tune with each and every cast and each and every drift. And when you fish that way, it puts more fish into the net. So I'm gonna get a hook in the vise and I'm gonna walk you through the steps on how I tie it. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you how I fish this fly. So the hook I have in the vise is a Dohiku 644. I like tying, this is a size 12. I really like tying mops on uh, more traditional hooks. This is a caddis hook, but I like using inverted beads or I like using slotted beads where I'll offset it and have it invert like a jig hook. I just think it looks cleaner and I do like the wide gap hooks for these. So I'm gonna show you how I put the inverted bead on and how we hold it in place because this hole is a lot larger than the diameter of the hook shank. So what I like to do is, and this is black UTC 70. What I'll do is I'll put a little thread down and just do whoop, one whip finish and we'll cut it. Then I'll take a little super glue, just dab it there. And then now the bead has something to grab onto. So I'll just pull it up over the thread, hold it in place for a second. And then you can see the bead sets a lot easier than having it spin around on the hook shank. So now we'll just take our black UTC 70, start it behind the bead. The mop that I use is from BNC Fishing Supplies. I really like this, it's in tan. I really like these mop flies uh, or this mop fly material. It comes pre-cut. I just like the diameter. I really think it does a, instead of these big bulbous things that you get from the car supply store, uh, I really think this is really the perfect size mop. I tie it in tan and I also tie it in chartreuse, but honestly, probably 80% of the time, I'm gonna reach for a tan mop. So what I like to do is I will take my thread down do a nice base and then bring it back up. This fly is super quick to tie. I mean, you can tie this in less than two minutes. And the beauty about it is you can just, if you just take your time, even a mop fly can look pretty. So for the next step, what we're gonna do is take some brushable, super glue, or in this case, Loctite. And we're gonna take our time and we're gonna put it on both sides of our thread base and put a liberal mount on. Now this is where you gotta take your time. I take a bodkin and I'll move the super glue up to right behind the bead. And the reason I don't do it with a brush is because I don't want to get the super glue on the bead because this mop is gonna to stick to it right away. And then when you trim it, it, you have mop material all over the head of the bead and it just doesn't look nice and neat. And it's one of those things where if you take a couple of extra seconds, you can have it look really nice. So it's all about taking your time. So I'll take the mop material, I'll lay it on top and I like it about double the hook shank in length. So we're gonna lay it on top and now we're gonna push down and we're gonna pinch. So we're gonna push and pinch. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll it over both sides. So when you turn it towards you, 
you can really make sure as I hit the camera that you've covered the entire hook. So it's now engulfed the entire hook. We're just gonna take it, take our time, just give it a couple turns. Looks really nice. Now, we're just gonna cut this excess off and I like to lay it right on top of the bead. Just cut it in line. And you'll have a few stragglers and you can come in with your scissors You can just trim it up a little bit. For the next step, I like to take some black ice stub. You can use hair's ear, you can use um, uh, squirrel dubbing. This is Hens Spectra black ice stub. I like to put about an inch, and we're just gonna put a real thin collar just to give it a little finished look but just don't overdub it. I see people really overdub at the top of mop flies and it's really not necessary. So we're gonna go in here, couple turns, put some super glue on our thread. And once you put that super glue and you Finish it off like that, it's really just locked in. And there is your mop. That's about as pretty as a mop as you can tie right there. Um, just so you can see it's well proportioned. It actually goes straight off the bead. And that is just a really good looking mop fly. And once you get these things going, you can tie this fly in less than two minutes. And once again, if you take your time, it can turn out really, really nice. So once again, there's your mop fly. Uh, I do wanna say that uh, uh, I tie all my mops inside with size 12 hooks and every single one of them, I use a black nickel bead. Um, so how do I use this fly? It's really uh, uh, two, uh, two types of situations I use the fly. One is, let's say I'm fishing a really nice run and I've caught a few fish, maybe two, three, or six out of it. And before I leave, a lot of times I'll put a mop on the end and just take a couple more casts just to see if I can pick up some other fish that otherwise didn't hit my uh, first uh, nymph that I ran through the run. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, when they see a bigger morsel of protein like this going through, uh, it just might trigger a strike. So it's always worth putting that mop on because it does give you a bit of a different drift when you put something like this on. The second type of situation I'll use, it is, it's more of a tool. Uh, when you encounter windy days, the great thing about a mop is all this material, it soaks up a lot of water. So when you have a heavier bead, and I like to overweight these, so when you have a heavier bead, in this case a four mil, combined with the, the water soaking up quality of the mop, what it does is it just does a really great job of really stabilizing that drift and anchoring it in super windy conditions. So let's say I did a, a video on the beaver kill earlier in the year and it was super windy and I was using a mop that day because earlier I had a waltz worm on and a waltz is a little bit more aerodynamic and what happens is even a heavy wall to that wind, it just rips it right through the drift. So what I did is I put a mop on and because it's just more volume, it's a bigger fly, the wind just has a harder time ripping it out of the drift. So when you encounter those windy days, you'll see if you put a mop on, it's gonna really stabilize that drift. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'm happy to help you out. If you liked it, I'd appreciate if you give me a thumbs up. And as always, tight lines, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye.